Hey guys, this is Tim from Tim's Electronics Lab and welcome back to a new video. Now, in this video I'll be showing you how to connect your Fuel Elec or Fuel Tech uh, FY6900 to your Sigland oscilloscope uh, to use it for boat plotting. Now, in order to use boat plot, you need to have a Sigland AWG uh, and there's a little trick that I found on the EEV block that allows you to use this AWG as a AWG for the boat plotting. So let's get started. Well, in order to get started, you need a couple of things. So one obviously is the FY6900 or 6800. Uh, there are a few other variants online of this code that enables use for the FY6600. Uh, so feel free to look around on the internet. You'll also need a ESP01. Uh, uh, now this is the O1S. Features um, more storage, so doesn't really matter. You'll also need a 3.3 volt regulator. Now this is the BA033T. Uh, it's capable of delivering one amp, which is a little too much, but hey, it's the only one I've laying around. A uh, piece of perf board and you'll need a couple of female headers in order to create a two uh, four by two uh, headers. So if you've got everything uh, we uh, can get started soldering. Now I'll post a uh, schematic on the screen. Uh, it's regarding this connector. The pinout is labeled on the back of the device. But I created a nice and simple schematic so you can uh, view it on your screen. It's a little bit better. So, what you want to do is you need to grab your headers. And we want, uh, we want it like this, but then with female headers. So, cut off the excess plastic. Since we don't need it, make sure it's nice and flush. So we've got a 2 by 4 arrangement and well basically you want the thing to go like this, like this and not like this because otherwise you can't put it down anymore and the bottom Yeah, the, the, the pins we need to use are at the bottom, so that's going to be a challenge. I switched to a bigger board that we're going to cut, because uh, that's a lot better. Um, so you've got your 4 by 2 headers, put it on your AWG, so insert them into the hole. Turn on my soldering iron real quick and attach the PCB to it so you can see where the pins go through the hole and you can see how much space you've got on the left on the bottom and don't worry about the USB port because we will cut the most right two rows off and then your USB port should be uh, should still be usable. Now with the prototyping board laid on top of your uh, signal generator you want to solder one pin of each connector so that the connectors uh, will stay put then remove the actual uh, prototyping board with the connector be very careful um, to solder the rest solder One pin of both rows, then wiggle it, ah, see that didn't work out, solder the rest of the pins. Now 
like so. Alright, now, I recommend scoring the PCB a little. Like so. Now gently remove and cut the pieces of PCB. And now this should fit, the USB port should fit right there. So, now if we take a look at the pin out of the device, you'll see that this is ground, this is 5 volts, this is the RX and this is the TX and we have the oh, BA033T and if we take a look at the pinout, this is pin 1 and this is the 5 volts input so since this is ground and this is 5 volt uh, the middle pin is also the ground so you want the thing to go like this so you have the three dot three volts going out on the left side. So you have the three volts over here and the ground over here. Everything needs to be on the top of the PCB, otherwise it won't fit. So five volts, five volts in, ground and 3.3 volts out. So like so. Now I recommend that you solder it on both sides. You've got a good connection and you'll need to route it from the top side. All right. What you can do now is you can solder the three or the five volt line straight down. So that's the five volt line connected. You can do the same for the ground. That's the middle pin. This might be a little tricky since, well. Both your 3 and your 5 volt connections are right next to each other. But slow and steady does it. Like so. Uh, now grab your 3.3 volts from the side, I recommend. And now you need to route the ground in between and this, this will be very tight so you should probably do the ground first and then the 3.3 volts all right so we've successfully Connect those. Now the pinout of your ESP01 is written down at the bottom very conveniently. And for ease of use, I'll be going making it like this. I think. You see three volts over there. Um, TX. So that's first route all the other signals to the other side of the PCB you know it's easier to use jumper wires but this is a much more permanent solution so in my opinion that's a little bit better
Now there are a few connections labeled A, B, C, D on the signal generator. You don't actually need those. I'm not sure what those are for, but you don't need them. So that's the top row. Uh, but I don't suggest connecting anything to them. Although it would make a lot soldering a lot easier if you can just route it straight through. But I'm afraid you can't. Insert the other headers. Hold everything down. <laughs> now, since this is at the other side, uh, you want to actually route the pins. To the sides of the headers. So, RX, TX goes to RX. I should probably solder it like this. Yeah. So we need to route this one to here, over here. Sometimes solder joints are a real pain on solder bridges. They don't work like you want them to work. Exactly. Especially this PCB, because this has oh, rather large through holes. So the solder goes through the PCB and bubbles up at the underside. So that's rather annoying. Cool, so that's the TX connected. Now we can connect the ground, that's this pin. So there you go. That's the oh, that's the ground connected. So now we need this one to go there and this one to go there. Yeah. Jumper wire. Uh, it is the RX now the TX line. I'll be proud to get through the wire. So I'll be soldering the 3.3 volts myself. And they need to go to the RST pin, so that is this pin. And of course the 3.3 volts pin, which is the one on the corner. And of course, connect it to the 3.3 volts pin. Like so. So now all there is left to do is to connect this pin or this wire to that pin. Like so. 
Maybe even solar on my iron. Cool. And that's one. Now we need to route it to the left bottom corner. Solder it. Cool. Now solder these two together. And you're done soldering. Well, that's pretty cool. So, let's grab my multimeter and verify if we made the good connections. Put it on. This is ground. The middle pin is already. Um, yeah, this is ground. The center pin is ground. And the right pin is out. Alright, so we need to add another line. Like so. So now, when we put on our ESP, we've got the 3.3 volt and an ML line attached, like so. This is 5 volt, yeah, it's good, and this should be ground. So now it's well, finished. It's time to cut the PCB to shape. Now this is a very gentle process, since you won't want to damage the solder joints that you've just made. So make a nice scar on the PCB, take your time for this. So, there you go, so now you can uh, clean it up a little, and your adapter is finished. Take a look at it, take a look at how it shines, really cool right? So now, grab your AWG, and try to test fit it. Like so, and see, we can still reach the USB port, we can bend this like this, and now the adapter is completed, so we're now going to uh, take a look at the source code. And to be able to program the ESP, you can either use a USB to uh, serial adapter, or use one of these. Uh, these are, well, it's basically a USB to serial adapter. Uh, two, but you can directly plug the ESP01 uh, or 01S onto the board and insert it into your computer. So once at your computer, uh, you need to open a command prompt and you need to enter this command, git clone, you obviously need to have git installed and clone it into ESP both. You need to insert the ESP01 into your computer. And you should be able to select it over here. Select the right module. Uh, ESP8266 are right at the bottom. So this is a generic ESP8266. Enter your network settings in the ESP config file um, and you can also adjust various parameter parameters of uh, the thing. It has 
upload it. Now again, reinsert the ESP. And it's connecting, so it should connect right now. Because it's in, yeah, there you go. So you need to remember this, because we will need this for, uh, to configure it uh, later on. So unplug the device from your computer and we go back to the AWG. So we're back at the bench. Uh, you've programmed your ESP01S and now you can insert it onto the adapter. Grab your AWG and insert the adapter onto the AWG. Uh, please take note of the polarity, otherwise the thing will blow up. And well, that looks uh, all fine, all good. Now let's uh, connect it to power and see what happens. So I just wanted to show you this clip in case the thing goes boom. Let's hope it doesn't go boom. to enable it you go to system then config and switch up link to on and I think it should be slave and my guess is that there will be a voltage on the thing so it turned out that the 3.3 volt regulator was well bad they were all bad so I managed to find another one but it didn't match the pinout that I used so yeah here goes nothing that's a good sign so it's connected and that's part of my scope and in a previous video I discussed this humbug and I think that today will be a good uh, opportunity to actually test it but before we do that, we uh, need to configure the oscilloscope. So go to utility. I'm not sure why boat plot is under the utility uh, button, but it is there. So open it, config, source, uh, do the LAN interface. Now enter the IP address that your Arduino sketch gave uh, you. So mine is 192.168.8.154.54, save. If we do connection test, there you go, connected successfully. Cool. So grab your humbug and connect it to channel 1 of your signal generator and channel 1 of your scope. I'm not sure what the characteristics of this device will be, but I'm expecting something to happen around 50 Hz since this is a well AC mains filter adapter so let's actually run the boat plot let me get this out of the way uh, type simple set channel channel one yeah here Let's sweep 50, similar amplitude, 2 volts, fine. There you go. It's doing something. The values are being automatically adjusted and set, which is quite, quite neat. 
If we take a look at the screen of my oscilloscope, we can see that something is actually happening. Let me configure it. I want a lower... Oh, I need to actually stop it first. Stop. Set sweep, sender, span, 500 hertz, yeah. Like this. Can I lower this? No, I can't lower this pen even more. 100 points. Yeah. Span, yeah, this is good stimulus. Offset, yeah. Start. Let's see what happens. Well, actually, let's stop and take a look at the data. Oh, source, ah. I need to connect it to channel two. I was wondering why is channel two being shown on the screen, but yeah, probably because it expects channel two. Well, as you can see, it takes quite some time to actually perform the boat plot. Data list on. There you go. Source channel 2. Frequency 50 hertz. Now there's not. Oh, there's a difference over here. That's really low. Others are, well, above 100, and all of a sudden it goes to, so, might this be a 60 hertz device? I'm really not sure, but it could be. So, well, basically that's how you do boat plot with a non siglent AWG and a siglent oscilloscope. Now let's check just for fun. Ooh. Let's turn these off. Let's check for fun if we actually... No, we didn't use the AWG thing, so that's really cool. So yeah, none is installed over here, but the boat plot is working, which is really cool. So, that uh, finishes. Hey guys, this is Tim. I hope you liked that video. If you want to see more, please make sure to subscribe. Uh, you can also share the video with your friends and hit that like button. I'll see you in the next one.